Okay, finishing up with intellectual property. We've got the trade secret. What is it? Oh, it's a secret. Um, the trade secret is some um, process, idea, uh, recipe, uh, algorithm um, that you know and gives you a benefit in doing your business um, and is of advantage to you in doing your business in comparison to your competition who do not know the secret. Uh, and as I say, you know, as, as we get into uh, differences in jurisdictions and the laws in regard to this stuff, this, this one... Uh, no, I mean, you know, this one is, is murky even in common law countries. This is, uh, how do you define what, what is a, a process, an idea, and that sort of thing. Um, but, for example, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken's 11 Secret Herbs and Spices. Uh, one of which I can tell you is white pepper, which, <laughs> uh... Once you know what it is, it's, it's quite identifiable. Um, it's not something that's easily found in, in grocery stores I have found over the years. I like this stuff, and, and uh, uh, I put it in a lot of stuff. Um, not chocolate cake, obviously. Well, then again, a lot of people put uh, uh, hot spices into chocolate, so maybe. Uh, but I haven't tried it myself. Anyway, the, uh, the 11 secret herbs and spices in Kentucky Fried Chicken. That is a trade secret. It is a secret. They're secret recipes. Um, and so this uh, gives Kentucky Fried Chicken an advantage because it is uniquely Kentucky Fried Chicken and the taste, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people can identify it. Yes, they like that. They don't like another kind. And so, you know, advantage Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now, Part of the issue of trade secrets is you've got to keep the secret a secret. You have to take steps um, uh, to protect your secret. You can't just say, okay, we got a trade secret, you know, and then blab it all over the place and expect you to still have protection for your trade secret. If, for example, Kentucky Fried Chicken um, decided to, uh, that it would be a good advertising stunt to publicize their uh, 11 secret herbs and spices and the recipe, the secret recipe. And, and so they did that and put it up on billboards and in display ads and papers and uh, you know, blabbed it on the um, television and so on and so forth. Boy, am I dating myself. Nowadays it would be put on social media. Anyway, if you do that and then decide, okay, that's not a good idea, we're going back uh, to it being a secret, and then, you know, Arkansas fried chicken starts up using the same recipe and starts eating into your market share and you take them to court, the court would say no. You know, it's a trade secret. It's supposed to be kept secret. You publicized it. It's not a secret anymore. Uh, you do not have any protection under that uh, standard. So, you, you know, you do have to take certain steps to protect it. Now, what steps do you need to take to protect it? That's uh, open to question. Um, the, uh, you know, again, uh, these areas, both uh, trademark and trade secret, um, you're going to have, you know, more subjective decision making and certainly in, in regard to trade secrets I certainly don't know enough about um, precedents in 
that area of law to have uh, much indication at all of, you know, this is what you're allowed to do and this is what you're not allowed to do. Um, so, you know, I can't address that, but you do have to be able to say in court, well, this is what we did to protect it. This is um, the, the Coca-Cola uh, company, their recipe originally for uh, Coke, for original Coke, and then there was new Coke, and then there's Diet Coke, and then there's Coke Zero. Anyways, the original uh, recipe for the syrup for Coca-Cola um, has, uh, you know, supposedly kept in a safe and only a couple of people had access to it in order to do it. Now, I mean, that is probably a bit overblown because um, as you're, you're making the syrup, uh, you know, the people who are making the syrup, unless you you know, give one instruction to one person and another instruction to another person. Um, you know, they're going to know what they're making uh, and and what the recipe is. So uh, you've got that, but you've you've got processes involved. You've got algorithms, and and here is where uh, you can probably legitimately um, get into. Uh, algorithms and software protection because the again, you know, the, the algorithm is an idea um, you can get a patent in US law, but most jurisdictions would disagree with that uh, but if the algorithm is sufficiently novel, um, you can probably protect it under a trade secret um, and uh, you know, then again, you've, you've got to go and say, well, not only did we protect it uh, in terms of, you know, not telling anybody how we were doing this, but uh, we have, in fact, um, uh, messed up the, uh, the software so that somebody can't reverse engineer uh, what we're doing in terms of an algorithm. Of course, nowadays with uh, artificial intelligence and large language models, you don't have to mess it up. Nobody, including the owners of the system, know what the heck is going on in there. Uh, but anyways, um, you've got to protect it. You've got to do your own protection. And, and that really covers uh, all of intellectual property. Um, this is not criminal. You can't go to the police and say, you know, somebody has stolen my trade secret, trademark, that and copyright, you have to take the offender to court yourself. It's going to be expensive. And you have to get intellectual property lawyers who know their stuff and know the different, the, the particular area that you need to protect uh, to advise you in these areas and, and generally speaking, lead uh, your case. So, enough then about intellectual property.